Here's the Starship in its early days. I mean, yikes, right? But take a look at the current Starship. What a transformation. One of the key reasons SpaceX was able to turn that clunky prototype into the sleek spacecraft we see today is its innovative welding techniques. And that, my friend, is what we'll explore today. But first, we'd love your help in reaching 5,000 subscribers. It'll motivate us to keep delivering quality content. Thanks. To understand how far Starship's welding techniques have evolved, let's rewind to the days when the ship resembled a giant soda can. Well, actually, maybe a little further to the very beginning. Starship was initially designed to be constructed with carbon fiber, prized for its light weight and strength. However, while carbon fiber is incredibly durable, it begins to degrade at around 200 degrees Celsius. This would require a very thick heat shield to survive the intense 1600 degree temperatures encountered during multiple re-entries. Additionally, at a cost of about $150 per kilogram, carbon fiber posed a significant challenge for making Starship a cost-effective, commercially viable vehicle as SpaceX envisioned. In contrast, stainless steel, though heavier than carbon fiber, offers superior resistance to extreme temperatures, both hot and cold, making it better suited for the harsh conditions of re-entry. At just $3 per kilogram, it's also far more affordable and easier to mass produce. A material that is both durable and cheap, plus we have more ways to work with steel than with carbon fiber. Isn't it the perfect material? Well, not really yet. While stainless steel offers compelling advantages, it does present its own challenges, particularly in terms of welding. Stainless steel retains heat exceptionally well, and it has a higher rate of thermal expansion compared to mild steel and aluminum alloys. This makes welding more challenging, especially for less experienced welders. When exposed to excessive heat during welding, stainless steel can warp due to the high temperatures and may distort as it cools. Additionally, stainless steel is more prone to developing heat-affected zones, HAZ, which can compromise its corrosion resistance and weaken the weld. To tackle these issues, specialized welding techniques and filler metals are required to ensure a strong, durable weld. The early Starship prototypes used a welding technique called flux cord arc welding, also known as dual shield welding. It's a semi-automatic arc welding process that's similar to metal active gas welding. Flux cord arc welding works by using heat from an electric arc to melt the base metal at the weld joint. The arc forms between the metallic workpiece and a continuously fed tubular filler wire, which melts along with the base metal to create the weld. One type of flux cord arc welding called dual shield welding adds an external shielding gas into the mix. This technique was originally designed for welding structural steels using a flux cord electrode and a shielding gas blend, typically 75% argon and 25% carbon dioxide. It's perfect for thicker metals and tricky out-of-position welding, and it makes slag removal a breeze. It also gives better mechanical properties, fewer defects, and a faster production rate since welders don't need to swap electrodes as often. The only downside? It doesn't do well in windy conditions as it can lead to weld porosity. Today, SpaceX has all kinds of impressive facilities at Starbase, like the Mega Bay, Star Factory, and even a massive Gigabay that's in the works. But back then, they were working out of tiny huts to store components and tools. Bigger things, like the Starship prototype, had to be left out in the open. With constant winds coming off the ocean, the Mark I prototype was a bit of a mess. The welds on the first prototype were badly corroded, with cracks and rough edges all over the surface. To improve the welds on the Starship prototypes, SpaceX initially ground them down to be flush with the surface. This helped prevent weld cracks from growing larger as the spacecraft was put under pressure. But even this effort wasn't enough. On November 20, 2019, the Mark I prototype blew apart during a pressure test when one of the horizontal welds failed, sending the bulkhead flying. After that, SpaceX made a major switch with Mark II, adopting the tip-tig welding method. Tip-tig is a variation of gas tungsten arc welding, GTAW, that adds filler wire agitation to improve the dynamics of the molten weld pool. 
This agitation makes the weld puddle more fluid, helps release gases, reduces the risk of inclusions and porosity, and helps separate impurities. Essentially, TIP-TIG is a GTAW system with wire feeding that introduces a vibratory motion to the wire and applies hot wire current to the filler metal before it enters the weld pool. The vibration is created by a custom wire feeder, while the secondary power source provides the hot wire current. This method resulted in thinner welds with less warping in the surrounding metal. Elon Musk confirmed the effectiveness of this approach in a tweet, stating that, along with a change in dome forming methods, switching from flux core welding to tip TIG improved accuracy, created stronger welds, and reduced overall weight by up to 20%. To ramp up production even further, SpaceX began investing in robotic welding machines from companies like Liberty and KUKA. These automated machines specialize in precise welding tasks, leading to cleaner, more consistent welds. By integrating robotic welding, SpaceX has been able to scale up production, speed up workflows, and ensure higher quality across the board. Another welding method SpaceX uses is laser welding and the story behind how they adopted it is pretty fascinating. Rex Alexandre, the former senior welding engineer at SpaceX and principal engineer at the Handheld Laser Institute, recently shared his journey into handheld laser welding at the 2024 SEMA show in Las Vegas. His entry into the world of handheld lasers was anything but conventional. It all started when Elon Musk saw a TikTok video and decided to send him a handheld laser from Amazon. At first, Alexandra was intimidated by the device, but he soon realized its potential. He began experimenting with it at SpaceX and successfully used it to create welds that ended up in rockets, launching into space and returning safely. The use of handheld lasers started with structural components and eventually expanded to the nose cone. By now, it's likely that SpaceX has incorporated laser welding into many sections of Starship. This technique allows for more precise heat application and deeper penetration into the metal, making it possible to weld ring segments in a single pass. As SpaceX continues to upgrade Starship, they also continue to upgrade and test new welding methods. Currently, the welding methods SpaceX is using include electron beam welding, laser beam welding, gas tungsten arc welding, orbital tube welding, resistance welding, gas metal arc welding, friction stir welding, and plasma arc welding. However, according to SpaceX's welding engineer job posting, they're not just sticking to these methods. They're always open to exploring new ones. It's all about innovation. So what about you? Got any interesting welding techniques you think could work for Starship? Would love to hear your ideas in the comment. An interesting idea is to use a technique called spiral welding. This process involves shaping a flat steel strip into a spiral and welding the seam to form a cylindrical pipe or tube. Commonly used in industries such as oil and gas, water and wastewater, it is especially effective for producing large diameter pipes and tubes. Interestingly, this same technique might also be employed in the manufacturing of Starship hulls. Spiral welding is a continuous process, making it well suited for automated welding systems. The process inherently integrates quality control and re-welding, ensuring consistent results. Unlike traditional methods that create rings based on the material roll's axial length, spiral welding allows for the production of sections with optimal lengths. The current Starship ring width, however, was constrained by the maximum roll width available from steel mills, rather than being designed for efficiency. One of the advantages of spiral welding is its ability to reduce the total weld length. By utilizing the perimeter of the roll, minimizes the length of welds compared to other methods, such as cutting the roll into rings, which would increase the perimeter and consequently the weld length. Spiral welding also addresses a key vulnerability in traditional ring construction, the scalp weld. In pressurized cylinders, the circumferential wall tension is greater than axial tension, placing maximum stress on the scalp weld. By eliminating this weak point, spiral welding may allow for a reduction in material thickness and rocket mass, improving overall performance.
an automated spiral welding process similar to the one used for manufacturing thousands of miles of pipeline would enable full automation of the entire production process. This includes post-weld inspection, corrective welding, and cutting the material into pre-selected, optimized lengths. Elon's vision of mass-producing thousands of starships justifies the implementation of an on-site rolling mill. This mill would produce continuous sheets with an optimal width, eliminating the need for rolls and scalps, which would then feed directly into a continuous spiral welder. A flying cutoff system could then produce sections precisely tailored in length for their intended components. This on-site rolling process would also allow for precise control over material thickness, enabling the production of variable wall thicknesses, including tapered sections. By adjusting the sheet width, it would be possible to create tapered sections and smooth transitions between cylinders of different diameters, as well as produce bullet nose designs. Of course, good welding techniques are one thing, but to build a Starship like today, material selection is also something SpaceX must do carefully. The company explored various types of stainless steel during the development of its massive ship, even going a step further by creating a brand new alloy specifically for the project. Initially, SpaceX chose Type 301 stainless steel for its giant ship. This austenitic chromium nickel steel is available in both annealed and cold worked forms. In its annealed state, Type 301 offers exceptional stretch formability, making it the most malleable stainless steel in its category. When cold worked, it reaches the highest strength levels among the 300 series stainless steels. Type 3 O1 is non-magnetic in its annealed condition, but becomes magnetic after cold working. Later, in the SN series, SpaceX transitioned to using grade 3 O4L stainless steel for many parts of the ship. While both 3 O1 and 3 O4L stainless steels share iron as their primary ingredient, they differ in their chemical compositions. In mildly corrosive environments at standard ambient temperatures, the corrosion resistance of 301 and 304L stainless steel is quite similar. However, 301 is generally more susceptible to corrosion due to its lower chromium content and higher carbon levels compared to 304L. At higher temperatures, the difference in corrosion resistance becomes more evident. For example, when welding or laser cutting 301 stainless steel, corrosion is more likely to occur in the heat affected zones compared to 304L, as the process can lead to the precipitation of chromium carbide, depleting the chromium content in those areas. Elon Musk also highlighted another key advantage of switching to 304L, its improved toughness at cryogenic temperatures. At such low temperatures, 304L is more than four times stronger than 301. Since Starship is constructed from multiple welded steel rings, the welds are often the weakest points, making it crucial to use a material that maintains strength under extreme conditions. Although 301 stainless steel may offer higher strength under normal conditions, the switch to 304L enhances its overall performance by improving corrosion resistance welding ease, and its ability to withstand extreme temperatures around the welds. Currently, Starship also uses alloy 30X, which SpaceX developed itself. Although we do not know the composition and which parts it is used in, we can guess that its capabilities are superior to other alloys that have been used.